So hello everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how dynamic query parameters work in Power BI, what the limitations are, things that you should think about, and a use case that is actually quite neat that allows you to change the x-axis based on the parameters. So let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to do is basically this. So when you click on the slicer, it'll change the x-axis. Do you see that? So how do we do that? We're going to do it using uh, M query parameters. To be able to use this, this you have to have the October 2020 installed and you have to have dynamic M query parameters on because this is a preview feature. And it basically allows you to make changes on a direct query using a parameter. And one of the cool use cases that Mimo shows us here, and I'm going to post a link down below, is just exactly that, how to change the query parameters. But before we go into that, there are some security risks with that practice. So for example, it says here that if you use, if you dynamically set the values for the query parameters, they might be uh, users might be able to access additional data or trigger notifications to the SOAR system using injection attacks, depending on how the parameters are referenced. So you need to be mindful of that. Here they explain how you can mitigate the risk, so you are more specific about the type of parameters that can be sent. And not only that, there are limitations to these. The first one is that one single parameter to one field. So if you want to have the same parameter to multiple fields, you need to create multiple parameters. N none of the SQL sources will work. So it says here that it supports only M-based data sources, no SQL, no Azure, no Power BI dataset, Oracle Ultra data. So there's very few data sets that you can actually use these for. There are unsupported out-of-the-box parameters you have here. So you have basically text unsupported filters, unsupported operations, so this is very, very, very limited. But still, there are some cool things to do, and one of the things is what Mimos is actually showing us here. I'm going to post again the link down below, but let's get started. Let, let me show you how he did it. It's super cool. So one of the sources with these semi-query parameters of work is actually BigQuery, and he actually tell us that on his blog post. So I have actually imported the two data sets. This is a sample data sets that Google gives you if you, you know, uh, enable the BigQuery API. So it's quite cool. They have other data sources that are quite nice. And I just take in Austin, Texas Austin bike share data. Okay, so I have bike share trips and this is imported data of the number of trips or where they come from or where they go. And then I have a table, a dimension table or a table for stations. So where those stations are located. And this one is actually a direct query. And this is the one that we're going to work with. So the first thing that we need to do, first thing we need to do is to create a parameter. So I'm going to call this x-axis. I want to say that in my example, in my first demo, I actually put a line into the x-axis and the, the query failed miserably. So don't put any special characters. It doesn't seem to work. Here we're going to put text and here I'm going to put name. So we're going to create a parameter that right now has the value name, but we're going to dynamically change that value, okay? So here we have it. And now we're going to say, we're going to create a custom column in here that will say, if the x-axis is name, then put the name column, otherwise put the status column. So that's actually quite simple. You go here to custom column and you say, if x, x axis, it finds here the parameter is name, then put the column name, otherwise, else put status and then we're going to call these x-axis too okay so this is the the column that will change dynamically depending on the values so where are we going to pick the values from we're going to pick the values from a table that we're going to create ourselves so we're going to put enter data and this is our slicer data and here you put the values that you want the parameter to respond to so in this case is name and status was right so we're going to put this 
laser. Okay. So we should go live. There we have our parameter. Wonderful. So we're going to close and apply this. And now what we need to do is to bind this table to our parameter. So we say whatever value is chosen on this table is the value that should be set on the parameter. And then the parameter will go to the source, to the data query source and say, hey, I have this value now and it will return a new value to the column. And that's when it will change, basically. So I'll show you, it's a lot easier to see. So here we have the slicer. This is going to be this connector slicer. Here's our slicer value. So in here, advanced, you have uh, bind to parameter. I don't know, this is reading on the, I don't think it's reading on the screen. There, bind to parameter. So we're going to put X axis in there. So now whatever is chosen in the slicer, that value is passed to the parameter, okay? So we go in here, we're going to put bike ID, we're going to put count, for example. And now as the X axis, we're actually going to put not the status or the name, we're going to put the X axis because that's the one that dynamically changes based on the parameter. Put it as a bar chart. Let me press that for now. So you see here now, if you go here to transform edit parameters before I put everything together, you see that X axis says name and here it shows names. So watch this, if I put manually status, this is what we could do before. Apply changes is going to go actually back to the source and then it's going to rerun the query and it's going to say to change it to status because this x axis will change the status based on the value of the parameter as we specified on the column, right? So it's counting. So there you have it. So now instead of doing manually, what we're going to do is do it with the slicer that we just created and connected to the parameter. That's the beauty of this solution. You have it in there. So you see now, it right away it picks it up, status, status, name, status. I guess it queries the values and it goes faster, and it catches the values and it goes faster and faster. But as you can see, it works beautifully. So it is a very neat solution. Again, remember all the limitations and security concerns, you will be popped with a lot of stuff in the beginning. I've already okayed everything, so that's why you don't see it, but it is a neat solution. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you Mim, for showing us how to do this. Again, link on down below if you want to get his file. And uh, I will see you again on Friday with another Tax Fridays. Until then, take care. Bye bye.